Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar, Best Practices for Deploying Process Mining in Large Organizations. I am Yen, your host, and during the presentation, if you have any question, please leave them in the question box that I have screenshot in here. Um, I'd like to remind you to register to our upcoming webinar. The next one will be on the 4th of April, Process mining for robotic process automation. And um, our presenter today is uh, Mr. Tem Lehto, QPR's, uh, QPR's Vice President in Process Mining. Hello, Temu. Yes, hello again. Super good to be here. Okay, so uh, let's get started with the today's program. And uh, let me just see that I'm. You can see the you can see my screen. Okay. Okay. Let's get started with the webinar. So process uh, mining best practices for deploying this continuous uh, process mining in large organization. That is our topic. And, uh, and that's a sort of a rerun from, from what we did last week in the process mining live 2020. So here we go. Uh, the best practices for process mining that I will cover today are the BPM maturity, uh, the handling of the exceptions, uh, process excellence, how to reach that, then use cases for process mining, and then the center of excellence. So, uh, and then I will uh, cover a certain uh, three use cases, customer cases, uh, that highlight how these best practices take place in, in, in real organizations. And uh, a little bit about myself. So 25 years experience in this BPM area and a lot of experience in process mining projects and, uh, and also been member of the task force of process mining since 2012. So that's like uh, eight, nine years. Okay, about QPR, we have sold more than 1 million licenses, software licenses. We do business in more than 50 countries we have more than 2000 customers and a total of process mining projects we have 400 companies established in 91 so what are the best practices let's get started first best practice be aware of your bpm maturity uh, what we mean by this is that uh, some organizations are in this let's say left end here so operating as a functional organizations so you have siloed businesses there's like sales and marketing there's a production unit there's the r d there is finance and all those logistics and they are like a separated from each other so the functions are uh, leading the business activity while in the other end of the spectrum, there are process organizations where you think about already like end-to-end -end processes like order to cash, purchase to pay, and uh, product development. And, uh, and uh, here in this area, you already have core processes that are leading the business activity. So now when we talk about process mining, it, it makes a very big difference whether your organization at the moment is already process oriented or is it very functional oriented, organized. Uh, the, the, our advice for you is that if your organization is very functional organization, then the potential for the improvement when you take process mining 
and start to look at the end-to-end -end process change. The potential for the improvement is really, really big. So that's the good news. You have a lot of potential. The bad news is that you don't have the organizational structure that is supporting you. When you go to this kind of functional organization with your end-to-end -end process charts, you may not have the clear responsibility from the company who is the process owner, who will take your initiatives and start doing that. So you need to spend a bit more time in, in the organizational issues and finding the sponsors for your projects. But the potential is very high. And then on the other extreme, if you are very process organization already process oriented, order to cash, if you already have the process owners, then the good news is that you have the organization, you have the person who is in charge of the process, and they should definitely be excited about this process mining end-to-end -end view. And here, the sort of the other flip of the coin is that uh, your findings may not be that super new stuff for those people already in charge of the process. So you may not have that kind of a, a tremendous opportunity, like changing the whole way the company operates, which could be like a five-year digital transformation project. But the better thing is that you can jump right into the quick hits and, and start uh, pointing out places where the process is failing, and together with the help of the process organization that is already there. So please take into account the BPM maturity of your organization, and then with, with that in mind, uh, go forward with your process mining journey. The best practice number two, exceptions. Exceptions are causing the problems and they require effort. So now what's typical in BPM is that you look at this, how the process should go. You kind of make the ideal to be flow chart or process diagram. This is how we want to run our business. What we have seen in reality is that it may be that 80% of your current business goes according to your agreed processes. And that 80% may only take 20% of the whole effort that you do in logistics or sales or finance. And then you have 20% that is consisting of exceptions. And that 20% exceptional cases, they may, they may be taking 80% of your whole effort. So with the traditional business process improvement, when you just improve the agreed processes, your potential for improvement in terms of the effort saving may be quite small. But with process mining, you can actually find those exceptional cases. And there you spend a huge amount of effort in dealing with the exceptions. So you can reduce maybe this 20% by half. So you can maybe cut up to 40% of your effort. And that effort is rework, Way, process waste, repetition, customers not getting the right goods, the, the process not delivering in time, all that kind of extra hassle that is needed over here. So with process mining, you can actually deal with the exceptions. And uh, that's a really, really, really uh, good thing to keep in mind. Okay, let's go forward. Best practice number three, process excellence. We want to reach process excellence, but how do we do it? QPR has this clear three-step method. So when you start to do process mining with QPR, we help you to calculate three KPI values for each process instance or process case. Let's take an example, order to cash process. You get orders, sales orders from your customers. Together with you, we want to define the happy customer measure, which means that if I have like 1 million customer orders, for each order, I want to calculate the KPI, whether this particular order was uh, a happy customer order, so whether it met the customer expectations. So whether you were able to keep the customer promise. And examples are on time in full delivery, invoicing accuracy, anything that is meaningful for your customer. 
So that's telling about the customer satisfaction. Are your customers happy with what they get as an outcome from the process? That's the most important measure. We help to calculate that. Then when this is in place, then the question is, are you happy as an organization how it went? Did you produce the goods in time? Did, was it according planning, according to the, the procedures? Or was it a last minute changes, rework, but then in the end, shipping with the airplane on the last possible minute? Yeah, we did the customers happy, but we did a lot of extra steps. So the question is, first time right, did we do things according to our own agreed processes? And this is the internal efficiency side. So now we have the second KPI calculated for all of those 1 million cases. And then the third, nowadays companies are automating processes with robotic process automation. So once you have these two KPIs, the third KPI is at how much no touch cases I have in my process. Considering those 1 million sales orders, which are the ones, how many fulfill our criteria for the no touch. And then you can benchmark that by the country and by the business unit and product line and so on. So with these three KPIs, the process excellence is reached when, of course, all of the KPIs are, are true for every individual case. So each case is then categorized as to be like a, a happy, happy process or, or, or perfect process excellence case when they meet all these three criteria. And this gives you a very nice um, uh, framework for improving all of your business processes into the process excellence level by making sure that the customers are happy, which is customer satisfaction, making sure your internal efficiency is there, and then utilizing the process automation. This is what you can do with the QPR process analyzer and, and, and process mining suits. Number four, apply to multiple use cases. So we've seen within these 10 years of, of being in the business that every company takes these new technologies into use in one area of the organization where maybe the pain point is high or maybe the people in that area uh, just happen to be um, uh, searching for the new technology, they may have a right skill set and uh, where they see that, okay, it fits to their needs. However, what we believe is super important is that once you build the process mining models, so once you see the as is situation of your processes, then that visibility and transparency is super useful in many places in your organization. And once you have already built the model, it makes a perfect sense to share that model with the other people in the organization. They get sort of benefits from the work that has already been done in one part of the organization. Here's six main use cases for process mining nowadays. Number one, process improvement. There we talk about Lean, Six Sigma, reaching the process excellence, streamlining the process, making a good quality, uh, and, um, and comparing and benchmarking the operations in different uh, business units. That's the typical BPM area where the process mining is, is, is the number one tool at the moment. Then the process KPI reporting. Everybody is using uh, BI systems. To, to see all kind of measures. Now the thing is, if you want to see a lead time, for example, within a long end-to-end -end process, lead time between two activities, you need to do quite a lot of things in BI to get that lead time measure. And if you then want to see the lead time from order intake to the order handling and order handling from the production planning started and production planning started to the uh, logistics and, and so on, you have a lot of lead time measures. You need to do them separately in your BI systems. But with process mining, you get all the KPIs related to the process execution automatically by creating the process mining model. So you get those KPIs that I already discussed, happy customer, uh, internal efficiency. So this is a very good place for a total solution for the process KPI uh, report. Robotic process automation. People are automating processes. So in order to su be successful, what also Gartner research is saying, uh, you need to 
have a good understanding of how the process goes at the moment, what kind of exceptions there are, what other parts that you can automate, and what other parts where you should first streamline and uh, build some rules internally how the process should be done so that it, it's, it's repeatable enough so that you can succeed with your robotic process automation. And then, of course, that you can monitor once you have automated some tasks that whether the automation was leading to some other parts of the process uh, have, having an effect, either positive or, or negative effect. Okay, uh, then the digital transformation. This is a big area. It talks about how to convert your whole organization to be more uh, uh, competitive in the future by applying the digital means of, of, of utilizing internet possibilities and, uh, and, uh, and, and all kind of um, changing your business to be more digital. And here, the end-to-end -end visibility and transparency is super important. IT ERP development, we have so many customers who are migrating upgrading from SAP R3 to SAP HANA. You need to understand how your business is using your SAP at the moment in order to understand how you want to be uh, utilizing the, the new system. Also, companies are consolidating the ERP systems together. So again, that when you consolidate, like we have been helping Nokia and Alcatel Lucent, 50,000 employees both, how we can merge them together to the one SAP environment they have the same processes to certain degrees and then uh, certain uh, differences uh, in, in other areas. And then the auditing and compliance, which is a um, very important area. In the past, it used to be so that you could like uh, make the audit based on a certain amount of cases. Like you ask, OK, give me the documents, paper documents for these 10 uh, purchase purchases that we have, have been done here, but with the process mining, you can get all the one million purchases and then see with the help of the statistical tools, root cause analysis, you can find out those places where you should focus, where the money is and, and, and where the potential for the, for the problems is, is there. This is an example of six use cases that uh, once you are in an organization using process mining, it would be super good to, to, to get the other users, other people in these areas to join your efforts and they would benefit from using the models that you are already now building. Okay, my best practice number five is building of a center of excellence. Uh, let me first start by saying how we see things typically going. So it could be the number three over here. It could be that you just do some quick hit with, hits with process mining. So you may get a data set from somebody that has a transactional data, like some purchase order data or some um, sales orders or production, production orders or help desk data, some ETL process data that you know, there's a service level agreement and, and was it met on. So you may get a data set. And once you put that to the process mining tool, you may immediately see where the process problems are. We actually, I'm gonna talk about one case of, uh, in this presentation about that. So for example, for the robotic process automation, you may immediately see that all the process is failing here. So just by using the tool, you may immediately see that, oh, here's the process problem, let's fix it. That's number three, but then, a uh, more common scenario is that, that you have a development project. You have some initiative going on in your company. We want, as a company, we want to improve our internal auditing. We want to improve the loan approval process so that it's much, it becomes faster. We want to improve our on-time delivery. So then you, you have a project that has a goal, and then you take process mining as a tool supporting that project. So there you, you start to have people within the project or program that become aware of process mining and the potential of that. Now, the challenge and also the goal is to get process mining 
to be a standard tool for supporting the continuous improvement and the business transformation in your whole organization. And for that, to get the process mining to be the tool, you somehow need to build some kind of center of excellence. This is a new technology. It's easy to use when you have the process mining model, but when you need to create the model for your own company and add some special details that are customized in your ERP systems or a combination of using multiple ERP systems and logistic systems or whatsoever, then in order to build that end-to-end -end total visibility, there are some things that, that require um, expertise. So somehow, if you can manage to build a center of excellence, if you have a BPM organization, B, head of BPM, then that's a very logical, normal place for the, for the center of excellence for process mining. It could also be in IT, IT side, if your IT is very active uh, in developing processes. It could be on the digital transformation unit, if you have such a task force, that, that team could own the process mining tool so that they could uh, provide that uh, service and, and expertise to the other, other people. It could be driven by your business units. It can be driven by your auditing and, uh, and, and risk management uh, people in your company. It can be owned by you know, SAP IT people. But the thing is that, uh, uh, that somehow it would be good to clarify where the center of excellence is and, uh, and, and how you can uh, share the knowledge within your own organization. Okay, those were the five best practices. Please feel free to, uh, to write the questions. I will keep this, my presentation in 30 minutes, and then after that, I have plenty of time to go through the, um, through the um, questions. So now let's look at the customer cases. Customer case number one, Metaboard. So we have been very lucky. I'm honored that we have been able to help Metaboard since 2011 in their process mining journey. That means nine years of, of process mining usage. These slides are taken from the QPR conference presentation that was uh, that was um, done by the by the Metaboard people. So. In the first setting in 2011, they had challenges in the delivery accuracy and, uh, and the production efficiency. So there were a lot of challenges. And to understand what their business is, they do these kind of uh, uh, products, paper-based products in Sweden and, and Finland, and then they ship to all the areas around the world, Americas, Europe, uh, Asia and, and everywhere, 2,500 people and the supply chain people alone just managing the orders and doing the logistics, planning 150. And then, of course, all the uh, outsourced uh, transportation companies there. A lot of volume. Now, this is an example that we got out when they first in 2011 made the analysis. And in that analysis, they saw that there's the process that they had and the system did not support the end customer requirements as well as it should. There was too many order changes, for example, and orders were late. So they did a major improvement in their ERP system that took them a couple of years. And then when they uh, and designed a new supply models, like what they offer to their customers. And now, since 2014, they came back and said that now let's deploy these new processes and let's make sure that we can achieve process excellence. And then we started to do uh, continuous process mining where the process model is updated. All the as-is models are updated on monthly basis and all the KPIs are being reported. And now here you see an example of, 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 uh, of how it went. So in this particular month, in this particular business, only 6% uh, 
of the customer orders were handled as a perfect orders. You see, 89 already got the products in uh, deliveries in time. So that was a good thing. The customers were happy. They got what they wanted. This is a high figure in that business. But the first time right was super poor. Only 7% of the cases were done first time right. Now, together with the team, based on the process mining analysis, we picked important things that are factoring the first time right. And from those things, we see that many things were going right. No invoice corrections, no order changes in this business unit. Invoices even being created automatically, but the automatic pricing was missing. So always a manual step was needed there to process the, the orders, which slows down uh, and, and causes uh, extra work. So now this became the target. It was communicated to the people. And then you see 80%, 28, 38, 49, 62, 66. So gradually, month by month, you see how you get an improvement in that area uh, in the process. And what it means is that your first time right figure is going up all the time. And that means that your perfect order figure is going up all the time. So this is the way how to take the process mining into real continuous business improvement where you monitor, you set up your targets, you decide what is it that you are going to improve, you make that improvement and once that is done then you move to the next one. And uh, this was of course only one of their uh, business models. So you have to do this kind of exercise exercises tens of or hundreds or thousands of these kind of small continuous improvement exercises but once you do them your your company begins to be really like a, you are going to reach the process excellence and uh, then after that in 2017 the focus was going more towards the automating the bottlenecks for process automation and the question is that how big part of the process you want to automate? Is it more like a robotic process automation for individual tasks, or is it more like a full end-to-end -end automation with the uh, workflow process automation tools? And the success that was reached in this case was that the, the, the order lines that were managed with the first time right and, uh, and, and conforming to the customer uh, requirements on time deliveries was doubled as a percentage is, and the order lines, they got a 60% more order lines, so the volumes were going up and the headcount was still all the time the same. So the same people were able to manage and uh, process huge amount of uh, more business and, uh, and, and getting everybody, getting the on-time rights into place. Let's listen what, uh, what, what Mr. Matti Ketonen says about the case. Okay, that was Matti Ketonen. And what you see here is an example. These are not with the Metsa board numbers and figures. These are um, uh, sample data, uh, but they are like samples of, of how they use the system. So here you see the visualized as is process flow chart. This is what you can expect to see the, the activities, the amounts, and the, the time, lead times, how much time it takes to go from one place to another place. You see the root cause analysis. Whenever you make a business finding, something is going wrong in the process, you immediately get the root cause analysis where you see with the red color, the problem areas and the blue color, the best practice areas. So you immediately can make a benchmark like in my, in my company, the regions are these and this is the best region and this is the, the best performing regions and these are worst performing according to the finding that I just made here. And then the operations overview dashboards. These again you get directly from the QPR process analyzer where you have the process, you have the lead time, 
by the business areas. You have the on-time delivery KPI charts, order line trends, invoice automation KPIs, lead times, and uh, whatever you want to pick to your dashboards. So as, as, as the kind of the, the ending statement, the process insight and facts delivered by KPI process were priceless. That was what Yari Vuori, vice president of supply chain, told that that this this was really the really helping them to get, reach the process excellence. Okay, moving on. Uh, because Metaboard was was taking like uh, we have been doing business now for nine years. This is from the other extreme. How do you get uh, benefits really really fast? Pirao's bank in Greece, 12,000 employees, and uh, they have been implementing uh, robotic process automation, process automation for the credit application process. And there were challenges. It was not working in a way that it should. But what they want to achieve, cutting the loan application process from 35 minutes to five minutes on average. And uh, how did they do it? Let me play you one video of, of uh, Lambros from, from our QPR conference. This is a happy case. You just put the data from the system and five minutes you see the bottlenecks. It can be that simple. I'm not saying that it is that simple in every case, but it can be. The picture alone that you see may immediately reveal you that what you thought that was a problem area, it could be that the problem area is something totally different. You just make the finding, you, you, you use the root cause analysis to see the reasons behind that, and you may immediately see why things are taking more time than it should. Of course, this is what you then iteratively repeat to find the other root causes, and then in the monitoring, that, that you actually can change the real business so that things get better. Okay, so they have this process automation, robotic process automation dashboard, where you can see the automation by the process activity, like is it a green color, automated, or, or some other, uh, or not automated, or, or whether you're using some kind of bots over there. Touchless rate, fully automated cases, percentages displayed here, and then uh, then volume by the loan type. So you have different kind of businesses. How are they going against each other? Okay. And then let's take one more case, Teruma Europe. So this is kind of a very typical case where you have been using this video is taken from the uh, from the QPR conference, and they uh, they have been using QPR process analyzer for maybe three months, half a year when when this video was taken. Okay, that was Terumo and uh, how they use the system. They also utilize this conformance analysis, which is a feature where you can first you define your um, your kind of intended process. Let's call the design model of the process as a BPMN model. So you say that the process should go like this. Some of you may recognize the BPMN format and notation over here. And now you have the process analyzer as each process discovered over here as a factor fact based actual process. And now the idea of the conformance analysis is to compare each individual case against the design uh, model. And here we see the overall results. 
47% of the cases in this example are conforming, so they go according to the process, and 53% are non-conforming, so something is going in a wrong way. Here we have a trend, so the blue line here is the conformance trend, and the black line is showing that how much cases you have. Maybe the case variation in the amount and volume may be one criteria behind the non-conformance. But you see the conformity level here. These are the top violations of, of what, what is violating your design model. So what are the, the, the problems that you have there? These are the violating variations that, that this particular sequence of events is happening in 641 cases and that is something that is not supported by this BPMN. So you can take the first violating variation and think that should you add this into the design model, is it okay to do like this or if this really is something that should be avoided then that's one area to start working and seeing why, why there are these kind of cases. And if you want to do that, obviously you want to run the root cause analysis. So just opening the root cause analysis again revealed with the red and blue color what are the cases, what are the areas where you have a lot of those cases that are violating the design model and what are the areas where you have a lot of cases that do according to the design model. Then you can put those business people to talk to each other we are doing according to the model a design and, and we, we are doing against it. And then, then you, 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 the, the ones who are having problems may learn a lot of best practices from the others. This is the idea of the conformance analysis and with QPR you can actually even automatically create the design model based on the data. So you don't need to have the BPM models beforehand. And then of course if you have them you just load them as your BPM and models from your existing uh, process documentation tool. Then maverick buying is one uh, very uh, often used area where you put at the look at the purchase to pay process, you have the maverick buying KPIs and you define the rules what is considered as maverick buying. For example, you get an invoice from the vendor even before you have done the purchase order. That is very typical thing that happens and uh, many companies consider that as maverick buying. Uh, it should first have the purchase requisition, purchase order and only then when you do the purchase order you get the invoice from the from your vendor. But you have, you have that and then you can drill down and, and, and go, to, go to the details of the cases. Then last topic uh, is machine learning. So QPR is the leading vendor when it comes to using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning within the process mining and uh, we provide you two analysis shipped together with the product. There's a clustering analysis that lets you to understand the similarities and differences of the cases. So there's like a, you can detect the source quality issues or you can just understand that there's like apples and oranges in this data so you can uh, you can divide your analysis into two parts so that you won't analyze all the different cases within the same data set, but you can, you can divide them into separate data sets and then analyze those. So you might have these kind of orders and these kind of business and this kind of business. So that's the idea of clustering and the case level of prediction is super, super uh, promising and useful. You can predict whatever KPI value you want for those cases that have not been completed yet. For example, if you have a service level agreement, if you have already done 1 million cases in the past and now you have 1000 cases in your customer care or service center and you would need to complete those within three days or seven days, the machine learning can predict the outcome for those open cases based on the characteristics of the similar cases in the past. So machine learning is a lot about similarities, clustering and case level prediction, but in case level prediction you get a prediction of your open cases, which ones are the ones where you are probable, most probable to fail your service level agreement or on-time delivery promise. And those cases can be sent as an email report to the management operative people working there first thing in the morning, once per week, once per month, whatever it is that you want to do it. And uh, they can then react and see that what can they do with these cases before it's too late. So that's the case level prediction scenario, both supported in QPR process analysis. 
All right, that was um, my take on the best practices for deploying continuous process mining in large organizations. And um, I'm very happy to uh, start answering uh, some, uh, some questions over here. So please do put some Okay, so uh, can I talk about decentralized and centralized deployment of continuous process mining and the BPM maturity? So centralized and decentralized deployment. Okay, I would like to go back to the slide about the center of excellence. There are a couple of things that are worth mentioning here. So first of all, the, the, uh, your capabilities, the organizational capabilities of utilizing a technology like process mining, that is one area. So gradually you build capabilities so that you can use process mining technology. And there, it's a good idea to have a center of excellence, a team that is helping the others and active in the knowledge transfer. We have large customers who have more than 100, several hundred process analyzer analyst users, and they have this kind of a, a team that is sharing the best practices and organizing monthly meetings. Uh, to share the findings and and, uh, and and the and what has been achieved, and there's like a certain um, uh, group work areas where you can share your results. So that's one way to facilitate the uh, the share the, the the knowledge transfer. But then <clears throat> there's also the, the the question of 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 is it like a who. Who, who wants the results? Like, is it so that you have individual projects or individual business units uh, who own, own, own the results? And there I would like to remind this one that if you already, if you are very functional organization, it may very well be that the function lead, you just get one function lead, let's say the finance who is driving the project and they are getting the visibility because they want to get it. So it could be that it, it, it's heavily focusing on there. But on the other end, it could be that the order to cash process is the one who is owning that. And whether you are in the order to cash or the, the finance, the question is how do you go to the centralized, uh, centralized whole comp uh, solution that covers the whole, co whole corporation, maybe your data analytics, business intelligence people might have some kind of a company-wide coverage. But uh, of course, those areas where there's a room for improvement, where the processes can be improved, those should have access to these kind of tools. So I suggest you to be very practical on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, please feel free to write in the questions here. Okay. Uh, in which functions and processes can the organization achieve the fastest results with the technology process mining? Where is it better to use for the fastest results? That's a good question. So. Um, fastest results. Let me again remind about this, this picture here. So what I try to illustrate with this one is that uh, this process mining is all about using data. So you may get 
data that is really a gold mine. You may simply get a log data that has cases with activity timestamps, what has happened in the past. And uh, once you get that sheet, it may be that you get quick hits within the exactly the same day. So uh, it doesn't matter what the process is, but, uh, but if you have the data, then you, you get a very quick hits. So the, the question was really stretching that, how do you get the fastest results? What's the quickest way to get results? I would say that if you really want to get super quick results, then it, it's a question of what kind of data you get. And now using the QPR connectors, so the QPR connectors uh, allow you to extract the data from systems like SAP with a predefined connector. So you get the data sort of automatically from the standard tables. So I would personally go for the order to cash and purchase to pay processes. And specifically, if you are using SAP, I would really go for those because in, they are very standardized and you get a very good quality of data. So, so those are good candidates to, to, to go for. But it doesn't really matter what the process is as soon as you get the data. So if you have anybody in the organization who has uh, data that, is, uh, that can be used, uh, then, then let's just do it. And then actually what you can do is that you can just contact QPR and we can set up a, a proof of concept or pilot or demo for you with your own data. So if you have the data, we can just show you how your process looks like. Uh, it's, it is that, sim that simple. Okay, and then we have a question. Mm, let me see. Um, how can QPR support business improvement using Lean Six Sigma methodology? Please provide examples of application. Okay, very good question. So. Um, Lean Six Sigma, <clears throat> that's a very good statistical method to, uh, to understand that the, the more variation you have in your process, the, the, uh, uh, the worse the situation is. So, so according to Lean Six Sigma, you would like to have the variation to be minimal. So you would like all the cases to go in the same way, not so that someday it takes like a five hours to do something and someday it takes like five minutes. So in Lean Six Sigma, you try to make things to go in the same way always so that there's not like exceptions. But you do it with the statistical methods. You need to calculate a lot of um, uh, variance kind of figures telling you about the, the, the quality of the process. In process mining, you don't need to calculate those because you have the data for each individual case. So Six Sigma, you can do with Excel or you can do with Six Sigma tools that are calculating the figures for you, the measures. But when you want to analyze the whole data, you need a data mining tool like QPR Process Analyzer that can keep the details of all the cases. And the benefit here is that with Six Sigma, you can find the problems. With process mining, you can find the problems. With Six Sigma, you need to start doing a separate root cause analysis in order to find out what is causing the problems. With process mining, you have all the details in the system already, so you can just ask the system to tell you what are the potential root causes. And if you don't get it, then you just feed in more low-level data into the system and you will get the root causes. So with process mining, you will get the root causes automatically from the data. And we are happy to show that. So you can just uh, book a meeting and we'll do that. Okay. All right. Then we have a question of what approach did you take when you choose the different KPIs and uh, process performance indicators to follow in the example you show, red, yellow, green traffic lights? Did you do it through interviews, value stream mapping, etc.? Very good comment. What was the approach? Let me tell you, because QPR has experience from this kind of performance management solutions. So we 
we have been delivering this kind of um, KPI metric solutions for many needs already 10 years before the process mining. So the thing is, how do you, one question is, how do you get these green and red and yellow? Because there may not be these uh, target values in the organization. And that's that's uh, that's an excellent question, and that's precisely uh, uh, what what was also taking place in this project. So there was no company-wide target for the automatic pricing. There was no company-wide target for invoices created automatically. But as part of our consultancy project deployment project, we advised the customer to just throw in a number that they as the development people consider to be a good level of achievement in order to reach the process excellence so it doesn't it doesn't have to be any uh, strategy driven goal that has been approved by the top management it can be the sort of the, the gut based feeling of the people who are dealing with the process at what would be a good acceptable level an average level and now sometimes you can have rules like 20% red 20% green and 60% yellow for example or if your process is in a very bad shape then you set up so that 50% it is red and then rest is like uh, green and yellow just so that the colors that you pick and the amounts they will then reinforce your message that you will see that okay we are doing good with the happy delivery but we are doing bad with the first time right and then you get the commitment that yeah that is really true first time right is not going in a, in a right way and then you discuss with the management what is your next three-year goal where you want to be and then set up your internal objectives according to that and what they did in this case they even went so that they uh, were tying these measures into the uh, uh, policies, salary payments where they kind of not the salary, of course, but the extra money was sort of um, paid uh, was sort of connected into these process KPIs that they had over here, and uh, and that is the whole story about how do you deploy the changes into your real business. So process mining is a magnificent tool to give you the transparency and visibility and to show you the root causes. But then you need to change your own business. It's not gonna change the way how you operate. It needs people to do the change, implement the change. And this is a one method of providing on monthly basis, the traffic lights, and then getting people commit to the fact that let's make these things right and our business will be much better. And of course, you need to get good results, quick wins, communicate internally in the organization, hey, we have reached this, it is possible to improve, good atmosphere, and then reach, uh, reach those goals. And, and then also show to the people that, okay, what used to be the situation, everybody very busy, working late, 10 hour days, whatever, 16, 15 hour days. Uh, now we can do the same thing with less time and, uh, and with a better result. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me. Yep. Then let's see if there was still some questions over here. Okay. Okay. I think that was the. Let me just quickly, very quickly see this so that. Uh, okay. Can we share the slides after the meeting? Yes. Yes. We are happy to share the slides. And uh, what we suggest to you is like, like Yen was showing in the beginning. So we have the QPR webinar series. Now we, we of course hope everybody is safe in this 
tough times and there's a lot of crisis going on, the corona going on, but uh, we have these uh, webinar series. So every week we will be covering one of those use cases. So please do uh, join us. You see the webinars um, in the QPR webpage. And uh, we are happy to share the slides and we are extremely happy to have a meeting with you, uh, online meeting to, to discuss a little bit about if we can help with the first next steps that you would be taking. For example, if you have data, how to create the, um, the proof of concept uh, demo based on your own data and, uh, and, and how, to, how to go forward. Uh, Tools, the process analyzer tool is, is very easy to use. It's very easy to take into use. You can use the cloud version. Uh, of course, you can have an on-site, but cloud is the typical option at the moment nowadays, and, uh, and, and you get started. And if you want to learn more about the tool, the product itself, then we have that available to you. Also, there's a webinar next week, uh, or you can just book a separate online, online demo. So, from my behalf, thank you very much. I was really, it was really nice to be talking to you and I look forward to, to meeting you uh, in an online meeting. Thanks, bye-bye.